Okay, so if you just um, go into change plan settings there, and uh, yep, just select there to change the display. If you set that to five minutes, that will turn the computer's display off after five minutes. My role is uh, I teach people um, how to change their computer settings and how they can manage their um, uh, power usage on their computers better. Uh, if you change the computer settings from a more power intensive to an energy efficient um, profile, you uh, actually reduce the total consumption of power both in the monitor and in your um, computer as it will, um, uh, it actually turns itself off earlier, um, it, it actually manages the way that the actual power consumption that it uses when you're doing individual tasks. So instead of running at full bore the entire time, if you're just doing light workload on the machine, um, it will actually power down and use less power consumption. Um, you can end up with some quite significant power savings over time. The power mat here at, uh, at Byron Camus also helps us in terms of monitoring uh, what our uh, power usage is and which appliances are using the most amount of power. Um, you can get one of these from your local library um, and it's uh, very useful in determining the total uh, kilowatts per hour that appliances use. Okay, now we're going to take our power mate and uh, plug it into our fridge here um, to determine our hourly kilowatt usage for the fridge. So first of all, we need to turn the fridge off, remove it from the power socket, take our power mate, plug it into the wall here, Take the fridge and plug it into the power mate and then turn it back on. And immediately the power mate will be showing us what our real and hourly kilowatt usage is for that device. What we now do is leave this for 24 hours and come back and it will tell us what our average hourly kilowatt usage is for the fridge. You can then uh, go to your power bill and actually look at how much it costs per um, uh, how much you're paying per kilowatt hour and so you can use that information to determine you know how much per day that appliance is costing you and you can make uh, behavioural changes around, um, around that information. My name is Mandy Nolan, I am a stand-up comedian and I've been teaching here for 17 years. Uh, surprise to me because I never thought anyone would want to do stand-up comedy as a course. I thought I'd end up with four people and it's been rolling for 17 years which is sort of unbelievable but there you go. Well, last week. It does feel a little bit like an episode of Survivor. There's four of you left. We're going to see who's going to come through to the next episode. Tonight's challenge, the microphone. That's the, this is how hard microphone technique is. This is the other option when you're performing, is holding it in your hand. Now, one of the main things when you hold a microphone in your hand, you've got to make sure that you're, you still have this imaginary distance between the, you know, the, the cone where the sound goes. Because people do tend to do this, and they'll go, and I'll talk to people over there, and I'll say something, and go run off the microphone. And then people don't hear what they're saying, so you do have to stay. I think I started in 17 years ago. I can't remember what it was. I think it would have been a church hall. And then it was the CWA hall. And there's always something, when you, when you work, it's great to work in community halls, but they're a little bit stinky. You know, they always smell a little bit like, hmm, I don't know. It's just a bit of a, so that strange smell when you open a community hall, like, you know, tea bags from 1958 or something. It's a little bit overwhelming. So suddenly working in a purpose-built training centre with beautiful lighting, high ceilings, comfortable, really great learning environment. So I think it, it creates a really nice relaxing environment for people where it's actually comfortable to be in it. Particularly in summer, you very rarely need to use air conditioning. Um, Occasionally, you know, when it's about 400 degrees, you know, then we sort of, I might pop, I tend not to put it on. I tend to let them sweat it out because I think people work better under pressure. I think air conditioning has just made people so soft anyway because we've all become used to this weird climate, which is called, we have this thing, it's, it's actually something that's been socialised, it's not real. We have this idea of climate comfort, which is at about, I think, 20, what is it, about 25 degrees or something like that, 24 degrees. And I think you've got to learn how to cope with extremes you know, whether you're hot, whether you're cold, because that's part of it, and you just put more coats on or take less coats off. And that's something I make jokes about too, but this is a very comfortable centre, it's very nice. And I think it has a great impact on the learning. And I particularly love when there's someone next door doing something really meaningful, like songwriting, you know, or the... <laughs> and then I'll forget and I'll have my comedy class and they're saying sort of really disturbing and, and often quite obnoxious things and you realise how loud we are. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad people have put up with us for so long, though. So. 
They never really complained except for the life class when I walked in and there was the, the nude man, you know, which is pretty funny. <laughs> but he looked sustainable. <laughs> he looked like he wasn't taking much from the planet, not even clothes. <laughs> Computers are everywhere these days, and that's no bad thing. But if you've got quite a few in your building, you need to be aware that they could be chewing up unnecessary power when they're not being used. It's not a lot for an individual computer, but then who's just got one computer these days? Computers actually use a fair bit of power even when the screensaver is on or in standby mode. If your building has multiple computers, there's cash to be saved just by using a couple of simple tricks. First, turn them off overnight and turn the power off at the wall. Better still, put all the computers in one room through the same power board so you can switch them all off at the wall in one go. Or you might be able to use a timer to make sure they're off when nobody's around to use them. Turning the power off at the source not only saves you energy, it protects the computers from storm surge damage. Standby mode isn't good enough. Each computer is going to continue to use up to 10% of its normal power load while it sits there on standby, and that adds up. Also, get into your computer settings. They're not that hard to find. You can do simple things like lower the screen brightness, enable energy saver settings, and turn the screen saver off so that after an idle period, the monitor switches itself right off. Keep your printers, scanners, and other peripherals turned off when you're not using them. Simple stuff, but all these things can add up to decent sized savings. If you've got several computers, think of it this way. There's no reason to keep paying for them if they're not doing any computing. Jump onto the website for more details. about it I want to be in on the scene So tell me where it's happening Just around the corner Is where it's all happening In a greenhouse around the corner Finding energy solutions Just around the corner Is where it's all happening